Hey guys, Rob here from Brevity and today we are going to discuss the Dutch national flag from While talking about two-pointer algorithms, it wouldn't be fair if Brevity didn't cover one of the most important two-pointer algorithms amongst the lot, the Dutch national flag problem which is also known as a three-way partitioning problem. Before we get into this video, if you haven't subscribed yet, do hit that subscribe button. We release videos almost every day and if you're sitting for placements, you'll find them super useful. Now the Dutch national flag problem was proposed by Edsbert Dijkstra, the same dude who proposed the shortest part algorithm in graph theory. The problem statement is simple. The flag of the Netherlands consists of three colors, red, white, and blue. Given balls of these three colors arranged randomly in a line, the task is to arrange them all such that the balls of the same color appear together and their collective color groups are in the correct order. The reds, followed by the whites, and finally the blues. The algorithm I'm going to propose to you today is a variation of the three-way quicksort which is extremely robust to repeated elements. I highly recommend you to watch the Mo Zeros video, link will appear over here, because the approach we'll be using is very similar to the logic we applied for that problem. Now let's talk algorithm. First, let us initialize three pointers named start, cut, and end. Cut and start will both begin at zero, and n will begin with the final index, which in this case is n minus 1, where n is the number of balls. Now we're gonna keep the start and end position the same in the beginning, and we're gonna keep moving the cut pointer and swap elements while needed. As a quick reminder, we first want all the red balls to appear, then the white balls, and then the blue balls. Starting with the cut pointer, Keep incrementing it until the condition car less than or equal to n is false. Now, let's say that car is pointing to a red ball. This is the first case. Now, if we realize that it's pointing to a red ball, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the uh, balls that are present in the start index and the current index. Then, we're going to increment the start by 1 and we're going to increment the car pointer by 1. If the ball which car points to is white, we do not perform any swap and we are simply going to increment the card pointer. The ball is at the place that we want it to be. Remember, we want all the reds on the left, all the blues on the right and the whites in the center. So if we encounter a white ball somewhere in the center, we can assume that it is at the right place and we can simply increment the card pointer. The final case is if the ball which card is pointing to is blue. In this case, we are again going to swap the card the ball which car is pointing to and the ball which end is pointing to. After this, we are going to decrement our end because the ball, the blue ball which I found is now in the last index. So now all we have to do is decrement the end index. Now the next time we find a blue ball, we are going to put it in the second last position, right? But there is a catch over here. If you notice, we are not incrementing the car pointer. And there's a good reason for that. Let's say that if the ball which we swapped from the last to the card pointer is a red ball or a blue ball. And now if we are going to increment card, we are going to end up with a red ball or a blue ball in the center. And that is not what we want. We only want the white balls in the center. So remember, everything to the right of the card pointer is unknown. We do not know what element we might be bringing from an unknown place. So we need to scan the element one more time before we increment the card pointer. So in the next iteration, we're going to again check the card pointer. And in this case, if it's one of the other two colors, that is when we're going to increment the card pointer. Now, when the card pointer becomes greater than the end pointer, that is a terminating condition for our algorithm. Our array is now sorted in the required order. Reds, followed by whites, followed by the blues. Now, let's look at a visual demonstration of this very same algorithm in order to get a better understanding of how it works. So now I've taken a random array of th balls of the three colors, red, white, and blue. So as you can see, we have three red balls, three white balls, and two blue balls. Now the first step in the algorithm is to initialize the pointers. 
So I'm going to initialize start at index 0, cut at index 0, and end at index of n minus 1, which is the last element in the array. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to check what, L, what ball car currently points to. And in this case, car is pointing to red. And according to the algorithm, we know that red balls are supposed to be on the left side of the array. And since it's a red ball, we have to swap the balls that are present in the start index and the car index. But in this case, start and car both point to the same ball. So there's no use in swapping anything, right? So we can skip that step and now move on to the next step, which is going to be incrementing the start and car pointers, which is what I'm going to do over here. All right. Now we can see that we are pointing to a white ball. Car is currently pointing to a white ball. So in this case, we are only going to increment car because the white balls are supposed to be in the center and we can assume that it is where it's meant to be. So now we are going to increment the car pointer and we can see that it now points to a blue ball. So what do we do when it points to a blue ball? We are going to swap the elements, which is the balls that are present in the car and the end index. So in this case, we are going to swap the blue ball to the end and the white ball back where the blue ball was originally. And now, do we increment a car pointer? No, we don't. We are only going to decrement the end pointer. All right. So now in the next step, we can see that car is pointing to a white ball. And what do we do when it points to a white ball? We simply increment car. There is no swapping over here. So now we are incrementing car. And now again, we are pointing to a white ball. So any point to a white ball, we do nothing. We simply are going to increment our car pointer. And now car is pointing to a blue ball. Now, when it's going to point to a blue ball, we have to swap the balls which are present in the car and the end pointers. So now we're going to swap as shown over here. The blue and red balls are interchanged. And now we are going to decrement our end pointer. And we are not going to increment our car pointer. And here you can clearly see why. Let's say that we incremented our car pointer and it's pointing to the next red ball. Then this red ball that car is currently pointing to over here is now going to be present in the center of the array, which is not what we want. This ball is supposed to be at the beginning of the array. So that is why we only decrement end and we do not increment car. All right. Now we can see that car is pointing to a red ball. And if it's pointing to a red ball, we are going to swap start and car, the balls which are present in those two pointers. And then we are going to increment car and increment start, as shown over here. And now, car is again pointing to a red ball. And when that happens, we are again going to swap the balls present in start and car. And then we are going to increment both start and car. And now, we have reached a terminating condition because car is now greater than end and we are going to break out of the while loop. And we can see that we have successfully partitioned the array into three sections. And we can notice that all the balls before the start pointer are red in color. All the points, all the balls after the end pointer are blue in color and everything else is white in color. This is the beauty of this algorithm. And this logic is very important and will be used in multiple problems based on two points. Now, if we're going to talk about the time complexity, uh, we are going to maintain three indices and we are going to traverse through the array. But in the worst case, we traverse through the entire array only once. This usually occurs if all the balls in the given array are of the same color. And if we assume the size of the input array to be n, then the time complexity of this solution is going to be O of n. The space complexity of this solution is O of 1. This is because we're only declaring three pointers, start, end, and car, which will take constant space in memory. Hence, the time complexity is going to be O of n, and the space complexity is going to be O of 1. With the algorithm out of the way, it's now time to code the problem. Choose your path. Java, C++, or Python. The choice is yours. Okay, goodbye.